Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. Now that we have traffic light and stop sign control, I wanted to try to put that together with Navigate and Autopilot and see what the full experience is like, okay? Before we get into that, I just wanted to address one point about it being in beta. A lot of people in the comments are saying my expectations are a little bit too high because it's in beta. I just want you guys to take a look in case you don't know. Uh, all of the uh, Autopilot suite is in beta. That doesn't mean that it's early. It just means that it's a work in progress and it gives a little bit of liability limits to what tesla is responsible for when people engage this so auto steer which has been here since 2015 uh is in beta navigate on autopilot since 2018 again the latest and greatest traffic and stoplight control is in beta summon is also in beta uh and even the wipers uh the auto wipers they're also in beta again that doesn't mean it's just early software it really just means that uh it's a work in progress tesla is continuously evolving and really it just serves as a legal disclaimer Okay, that said, let's jump right into it. Let's get the camera situated to where we need it to be to get that nice view. And for those that are eager, I'm gonna go ahead and put it back into the, the full POV view like this so you can get as much of the view as possible. Uh, and then one thing I'm gonna put on here is I'm actually going to change the navigate on autopilot settings to require lane change confirmation via the stalk. That way it's consistent with the stoplight. So with the stoplight, I'm gonna pull the stalk and then to make a lane change, I'm gonna pull a stalk just so it's consistent. All right, I have the directions up. I'll also put the backup camera up as well, just so you guys can see that. Sorry, it's still dirty. Sorry, we still haven't got a chance to wash it, but let's get it going either way. Got my destination in, let's take off. Can't engage autopilot just yet because it doesn't have the lane line. engage now so now it's engaged and we'll start the engagements or disengagements from here obviously we're going to take into consideration that we have to make the turn so we'll dis disengage for the turns and that's a light so i'll go ahead and uh, signal through that but for the most part i'll try to let the car do as much as possible to see what that experience is like parked car on the side of the road Let's see what happens here slowing down that's nice I'm going to disengage. It doesn't seem to know what to do here. It thinks it's a car in the middle of the lane. So I'll disengage. That's one disengagement. Resume here. And I actually have to make a turn here. So I'll go ahead and put my turn signal on. Disengage to make this turn. Again, one turn. For each turn, we'll disengage. Proceed through the yield. Now I will re-engage. Slow down for the ambulance. I'll disengage for the ambulance. Re-engage here. We're good to go. Proceed. I'm confirming the signal here to proceed through the light once the signal changes. It seems to want to get me really close to this, this line right here. So you see the car turning which is pretty extreme. Pressing to confirm. I'll use the terminology that, that uh, Tesla uses so we don't confuse anyone. I won't say override, I'll say confirm. Confirming through that, I'll have my hand resting here. And we will proceed. No pothole, manhole uh, detection just yet, so it can't avoid that. Um, I'm not sure how they would even do that because the sensors are still higher than the road, so it wouldn't be able to detect it unless it had some new sensors, but we'll see what Elon can come up with. Uh, the folks at Tesla are pretty, uh, pretty crafty and creative. So what we'll do for this drive, um, as it you know could be a little bit long, could it be about 15 minutes or so, actually 10 minutes it says, but it could be a little bit longer just depending on traffic. I'll, I'll fast forward past parts that are, are pretty monotonous on the highway. One thing to note here is that this seems to be more of a 
highway than a local road, so it's giving me the option to override the speed limit and do a five mile an hour difference here uh, because it seems more like a highway or it thinks it's more like a highway than an actual local road. It's beeping for some odd reason because the lane is starting to widen. Stopping, I'm gonna confirm that it's gonna go through this green light or go through this light in general. So these are circumstances where the, depending on the road, depending on how it's mapped in Tesla's database, will allow you to go over the speed limit and still have the uh, traffic light and stop sign adherence. That's a big pothole, sorry about that. So coming up here, the lane is gonna divide into two lanes. Uh, it's interesting to see how it's going to handle this. Starting to swerve a little bit, not good for the person behind me, I apologize. Now it's getting into lane properly as it sees the lines and I'm going to allow it to stop. Now it's asking me that it's going to stop. It's telling me it's gonna stop here. It's not giving me the option to confirm past it. So maybe there's a fix in play here. Now that dialogue has come away and I can no longer press the stalk to run the red light. So I think Tesla heard this from people and have made an adjustment in the dark and shadow mode, a flip of the switch, if you will. I press the button, it can uh, press the stalk and it resumes. Uh, kind of going out of the lane, causing a problem for that truck there. So I apologize for that. If you saw on the rear view camera there. So that's interesting. It seems like Tesla's listening and they have the ability to make updates without sending a full official update here. Okay, it's gonna come to a stop here. Again, aggressively coming to a stop sort of at the last minute. Would like it to happen a little sooner. And now it's at a red light. And again, I don't get that dialogue. I don't get that dialogue. Let me see if I can allow the car to focus more on that. I don't get that dialogue and now I can't override this anymore. So that's always a good thing. Autopilot unable to proceed, please take over. I think they want, it's seeing me press the, the button or the stalk, if you will, I keep saying button. Keep wanting to press the stalk and trying to go to the red light, it won't allow me to. This is the right behavior that should happen. So this is great. It sees the green light, the turning green light, knows it's not for this particular section, so that works. Uh, again, that warning is still there. Maybe that's a little bit of an issue. Let's see what happens when this light turns green, turns green. Now I press the stalk and it continues over. I'm gonna disengage here because it can't really find the line as a truck near me. So that's another disengagement that needed to happen. I'm also going to take this opportunity to change lanes. I'm still in auto, auto, excuse me, adaptive cruise control. Can't engage autopilot just yet. I can engage now. See what happens. I'll get a firmer grip on the wheel just in case. I need to take this exit right here. So I don't know how I'm going to do this. So I'll have to disengage because it doesn't really take that on its own just yet. I'll re-engage now. And now we should get to what's known as navigate on autopilot with a car can do its own thing on the road. This is something we've already known it can do very well. So I'm not too concerned here, but I'm interested to see if there's anything new that comes up. Pretty steep turn here. It's able to take that, no problem. High curvature detected, navigate an autopilot. Interesting, I never saw that before. I'll confirm with the stock that I want to make the lane change. It'll do that automatically. Sees a car coming, takes evasive maneuvers. That was pretty okay. Confirming with the stalk again. Automatically adjusts to the speed limit. I have a 10 mile an hour over speed adjustment or offset that I put in here. I'll bump that up just to five miles an hour right now. Um, if I hold the stalk slows down phantom braking that's not good turns to 40 miles an hour cars are behind me i'll override with the accelerator just in this instance because cars are coming up behind me very swiftly and it changed still not allowing me to go up i can have to go up manually so i'll go up to five, uh, 10 miles an hour over because the speed limit is going to change to 65 right here okay so now i'm doing pretty good but that one instance where the speed limit changed probably because i was close to a local road not good but you can always override using the pedal or you can override using uh, using the stock. Okay, prompting me for a lane change because the car here is moving slower. I'm not going to go because I don't think I'm clear on the left and I'm moving a little bit slow here. So I'll just wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. Actually, I'll let the car do the work for me since we're testing.
go. Opening up here. Let's make it the lane change. Lane changes are really nice right now at this state of autopilot. Really nice, really controlled and composed. Traffic is moving pretty briskly. I'll just do five miles an hour over just to be safe. And move with the speed of traffic, which is really what you're supposed to do. Especially when you're not in the slow lane. Okay, so far so good. Everything is fine. No issues, just had to take over for the turning parts of the initial drive, as well as getting onto the highway itself. That was pretty interesting. Okay, so this is autopilot. This is the experience. It's very relaxed, very calm. This is what it's supposed to do, relieve stress. If I had to take this commute, so to speak, uh, every day, this would be very much a relaxing situation. Um, I could take my hands off the wheel. I'm not supposed to, so I'm not going to, but it is a possibility. Okay, so for all the critics out there about autopilot, autopilot itself, specifically on the highways, is phenomenal, next level. Um, it allows you to be able to just be very stress-free when you drive. But there are obviously circumstances where it's not quite ready for on the highway. And that's really just tolls and funky places where the lines go away and it has to sort of guess where the lines are. Otherwise, it's rock solid. Coming up on the overpass, I'm interested to see if there'll be some phantom braking. Prior to this latest release, 12.6, there was no phantom braking on this overpass. Now that we have local uh, traffic light control and autopilot, so to speak, or the beginnings of it, I wonder if that's going to kick in again here like it did in the, uh, the road before. Let's see what happens. Okay, awesome. Good job. Stays in the lane, stays composed. I should be coming up on the supercharger shortly. And this again, it's just a breeze. I'm not, you know, not doing anything. I could do like the Tesla video and have my hands on my lap, if you will, and do that too. Uh, but you know, this is very, very nice. So anyone on the fence about autopilot or full self-driving, definitely worth it to get it while the cost is down. The features are not all there for full self-driving for sure, but while the cost is low, and if you, have, if you plan to keep your vehicle for a while, it's definitely worthwhile getting now while the cost is low. If you're in a lease or you're thinking about getting a lease or something of that nature, that's where the cost of autopilot, excuse me, full self-driving may be subjective to whether you want to get it or not. Uh, depending on the term of your lease, depending on when you want to get a Tesla in general, uh, you may choose to not start out with full self drive and get it later or start out with it off the bat again while costs are low. Features I suspect will increase as the rewrite of the code is complete and as uh, people get back to work, people get back to business uh, of, of doing this. I know a lot of Tesla developers can work from home and that's great, but the testing of the car, that needs to happen somewhere. It needs to happen with more people, so that may be restricted by the pandemic right now. Here comes our exit. Let's see what happens. Typically there's a light I have to take over. Let's see what happens now with the new software in place. Signals the turn and takes that exit very nicely. Auto Navigate on autopilot is going to be ending soon, but I still have proper autopilot. Let's see what it does. Stopping for signal in 600 feet. I'm gonna confirm here and see what happens because there's a bit of a merge. Let's see what it does. Very nice. It doesn't take me this way. It guides me right to the lane it's supposed to be in and comes to a stop at the red light here. Perfect. And again, that dialogue is not there. Okay, so let me see if I can run the red light here. And I can still run it here. Okay, so maybe it's limited to different locations. I can still run the red light here in this instance because I'm confirming to go through and it's not acknowledging the red light. 
Okay, so that was pretty much it. That was my drive. I'm here at the supercharger right now. Um, that was just a quick, hey, put it all together, see how it works together type of run. I'm gonna do another one. I'm gonna do some more advanced scenarios coming soon, but let me know your thoughts in the comments. What do you think about it? What do you think about the end-to-end -end experience of having autopilot, uh, both for local roads as well as the highway, combining the two to one seamless experience? Let's talk about it. Until the next time, enjoy your day. Enjoy your Tesla.